Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, in this video, I'm just going to be throwing together the complete rear end. Uh, I redid the uh, cradle for the diff. I uh, put port 15 on it and whatnot. Uh, I didn't really get any footage of that. It's pretty lame. Just stripped it. Uh, threw on port 15. Uh, but yeah, I got it all together. Uh, going to throw it on the actual car today, uh, as well as go over what you need to do. Uh, if you go with JDM, four pot brakes in the front and two pot in the rear. Really, only modifications you have to do are to the rear, and I'll show that. They're pretty simple. Uh, other than that, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Just going to throw this thing in. Probably as one piece, and it's going to be a pain, but let's see if I can make it work. All right, so pretty much ready to put it in. I'm going to try to do this the really hard way. Uh, more like the lazy way. I don't feel like putting or pulling the entire rear uh, subframe apart. I like the diff and whatnot, and I don't want to pull the axles. So I'm going to try to put it together, or put it all in the car as one piece. And that's probably going to prove to be way more work than uh, actually pulling it apart, so it's going to be quite a struggle. But uh, so here it is. Um, all is one piece right now. And got to somehow finagle this 150 pound thing uh, into the car by myself right now. So that'll be fun to watch. Eventually. Alright, so after much struggling and realizing that I am an idiot, uh, I found the right bolts and realized that I was trying to shove these things in there and they're about a good quarter inch bigger than the ones that are actually supposed to go in the hole. So I got stuff frame up right now. As you can see, I just need to tighten up the bolts uh, and then it should be pretty easy from there. It was surprisingly easier than I thought it'd be, but it took a lot of struggling with the wrong bolts to realize that I'm an idiot and I needed to get the right size bolts in there. So uh, don't do that. Alright, so subframe bolted up. Um, now I just have to move on to other parts of the diff to bolt up. Gotta get the trailing arms mounted. Um, and gotta take care of the four bolts that actually hold the diff in. I've got two of the nuts just loosely on right now. That was just to hold the cradle in. Um, so gotta get that in. Uh, mount the cradle to the actual car and the trailing arms. I'm not gonna do the struts yet because I'm still waiting on my coilovers to get here. Um, should be here hopefully this week so I can actually get those in and yep and then this the rear end will be pretty much buttoned up and ready to go. Alright, so got everything bolted up in the rear end right now. It's pretty much good. There's a few more things that I gotta tighten and throw on. Uh, but right now I'm going to... I gotta remove the brake rotor, uh, like the dust shields, off of the hubs. Because uh, they don't clear the big... Uh, big rotors that come with the two pop brakes in the rear so to remove them uh, I don't know if you can see there's seven spot welds I already had to do it on my last set of hubs but there's seven spot welds that's the easiest way to get it off you could take an angle grinder and just like trim it all off because this gets in the way of the bigger rotor because it's made for like a I don't know, it's like a 10 inch rotor or something like that, and there are 11s that go on there now. Um, but yeah, the easiest way that I found to do it was to just take the spot welds out, and then it pops out, and it'll actually look clean. Uh, instead of taking like an angle grinder, just cutting off the lip to be able to get the rotor on. So it's definitely the best bet, uh, and it's pretty easy. Uh, I just always use 
there it is. Uh, I got these from Eastwood or whatever. Just spot weld cutter. They work all right. Uh, they'll go right through it. It's just that point sucks. Um, and it's really hard to actually hold it on the spot weld. So I usually just pre-drill it with a small drill bit um, just to tap it a little bit. And it gives it like a little guide hole for the uh, actual spot weld cutter to sit in. But once that thing sits in there, uh, it makes really quick work of it. It makes it really easy. All right, so I'll do the first one. You don't have to go very far with that, just enough to give it like a little bit of a guide hole. Something to, for that punch to sit in, so the bit doesn't go everywhere on you while it's cutting. Just like that, first one's out, so it's pretty easy. Pretty simple as you can see. The first one is already free. It's, I mean, it took like 10 seconds. That's definitely way faster than. And simple as that. As you can see, went a little crazy on this one. Kind of came off the spot well a little bit, but pretty easy. Uh, and you can clean it up uh, with just like a, a flap disc or something like that on a grinder so you don't have these sharp burrs. And you just leave it. It's up to you. And then just blow out all the metal shavings and whatnot on your brakes. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna move on to the other side. All right, so once you remove that, that's pretty much all you have to do. That's like the major modification that you actually have to do to the car for the uh, JDM brakes or like the, they also came on the 06, 07 WRXs. It's a four pod in the front, two pod in the rear. Uh, and that's what I have. They're like the, they're red or they're black. They say Subaru, just look like that, which mine are pretty gross and dirty from being abused, but they work great. Definitely a lot better than the, uh, stock brakes that came on this, which were still bigger than like a normal Impreza, but uh, they work great. Uh, the only modification needed is to remove that, and you can either get these adapter plates that I have, which the only reason that I did get them was for ease of being able to switch back and forth if I need to from the 2.5 brakes that I have, because I have two sets of them. Uh, if anything ever happens to these, I'll just be able to throw on those with just changing the brackets and not have to worry about anything else. Uh, other than that though, you can get, like, buy that if you just 
if you get the backing plate from like an 06, 07 WRX or uh, the JDM car that you actually pulled the brakes from. And but then you have to pull the whole the whole assembly off, like the whole e-brake assembly, pull the hub, and then you have to press on the backing plate because uh, you have to actually remove this whole piece if you want to do that because it'll like make it sit out farther. And as you can see, these are the brackets. Uh, there's just a little thing that bolts on there uh, so that the, the bolt holes actually line up with the stock RS uh, holes, mounting positions. Uh, yeah, the, they're kind of nice to have. They're made by Carpoy. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about pressing it on, put any wheel bearing in while you're doing it, all that kind of stuff. So, unless you have to do wheel bearings, then it's a good thing to do at the same time. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to button up these brakes real quick, throw on the rotors, just bolt on the calipers, uh, and then finish putting the little pieces together, like throw on the strut bar, and that's about it. Well, that's all I got for this video. I just wanted to show like the rear end in this one and like the brakes and whatnot. Uh, I didn't really